Hello class and welcome back to EKG Chapter 8, Rhythms Originating in the Atria. Today we'll be talking about atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and supraventricular tachycardias. First up is atrial flutters. Atrial flutters is a rhythm that results when an irritable atrial focus fires out regular impulses at a rate so rapid that a fluttery pattern is produced instead of a P wave. The atrium is firing out its impulse so fast that the AV node bombarded with all these impulses lets some through but blocks others. As we know, the AV node is the gatekeeper, the protector of the ventricles. I'll repeat that again. The AV node is the gatekeeper, the protector of the ventricles. Impulses must pass through it to reach the ventricles. Impulses that are too fast would provide a dangerous fast heart rate. So the AV node selectively blocks out some of the impulses, letting only some get through. Criteria for an atrial flutter are simply this. Your atrial rhythm being that you have so many flutters, it can be anywhere from 250 to 350 beats per minute. Ventricular rhythm depends on the conductivity of the rhythm itself that has that the AV node has let the impulse go through. So when we're doing ventricular rhythm, it all depends on how often the AV node is letting an impulse go through to the ventricles. Regularity can be either regular or irregular. It can be one or the other, depending, as I said before, how many times the AV node has let impulses get through to the ventricles. There are no P waves due to the fact that it's beating so fast that P waves aren't forming you just have flutter waves so therefore you have no pr interval because you have no defined p wave your qrs when it does the av node does let an impulse go through your qrs shouldn't be any more than less than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds <clears throat> some causes of av node are simply um, almost always is some signification of a heart disease. Um, such as pulmonary embolism, valvular heart disease, lung disease, and thyrotoxosis. That's to do with your thyroids, because remember your thyroids is the hormonal controller of your body. Your adverse effects for atrial flutter is you'll have a decreased cardiac output, being that your ventricles doesn't have time to contract fully. Therefore, your output of your cardiac is slowed down or decreased. Some treatments for people who suffer from atrial flutter are digitalis. They may be put on a calcium channel blocker or a beta blocker, or they might have coordinated sinus massages to kind of help slow down the rapid heart rate that causes a flutter. Or if it's bad enough, they'll go through electrical cardioversion. And this is what an atrial flutter looks like. If you see, it kind of looks like shark teeth or picket fence. They just have this, instead of peas, they kind of have this sharp wiggly phase. And it kind of pokes out. It's kind of like a picket fence or just a whole bunch of flutters. The next rhythm we'll talk about is atrial fibrillation. With atrial fibrillation, <coughs> excuse me, Let's see. 
with atrial fibrillation um, or AFibs, they occur because of irritable sites in the atria firing at a rate of 400 to 600 times per minute. These rapid impulses cause the muscles of the atria to quiver, meaning they don't fully get to relax. So they quiver <coughs> or fibrillate, thereby resulting in an ineffectively atrial contraction, decreased stroke volume, a, a subsequent decrease in cardiac output, and a loss of atrial kick, meaning you don't get... Remember when I said that in the normal sinus rhythm or a normal conduction of the heart, you just before your ventricles contract, your atrium will do that last little quick start, that last little kick is to get the last little drop out of the atrium before your tricuspid valve closes off. <coughs> The AV node is bombarded with all these impulses and simple, simply cannot depolarize fast enough to let them all through. Every now and then, one of these impulses does get through to the ventricles and provide a QRS. Criteria for atrial fibrillation or AFib are your atrial rate being that you have all these quivers but no defined P can be anywhere from 350 to 700 beats per minute. Your ventricular rate depends on the conduction of how many impulses go through that the AV node lets go through. Your regularity is regular irregular, meaning it's so irregular that it's always irregularly irregular, no matter what. <clears throat> there are no P waves because there's no, your heart doesn't really have time to reset fully. So you just have a wavy baseline between your QRS complexes when one does impulse out. So therefore, you have no PR interval. Your QRS, when a QRS does form or does input out, should be less than or equal to 0 0.12. Some causes of AFib are myocardial infarctions or MIs, lung disease, valvular heart disease, and hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroid. Adverse effects can be decreased cardiac output. Uh, you can sometimes form blood clots, being that you have a decreased atrial kick. The blood that is left in the atrium can clot off and go into um, your heart or pulmonary embolism. Some treatments for AFib are blood flow um, blood flow is stagnant and clots can develop, so sometimes they'll put you on a blood thinner in order not for the clots not to form. Restoring your atrial kick by converting back to sinus rhythm can dislodge these cause, clots, send them into your circulatory system, which is not a good thing. Um, that causes stroke because then your valves will get clogged or your arteries will get clogged. Um, atrial um, fibrillation can cause a stroke or a MI or pulmonary embolism. If duration is less than 48 hours, the goal is to convert the rhythm back to a sinus rhythm as soon as possible. Treatments that can be used to help convert an AFib to a regular sinus rhythm or close to back to a sinus rhythm is by taking digitalis or you might be prescribed a calcium channel blocker or a beta blocker or you might have to go through cardioversion if the AFib is bad enough to where you would have to go. Another thing about um, AFibs is um, 
patients who experience AFibs may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Um, just all depends on the patient itself. <clears throat> Treatment for atrial fibrillation. If duration is greater than 48 hours, you have a greater risk of, of a blood clot where initial treatment is aimed at targeting the heart rate, meaning trying to slow the heart rate down. Non uh, anticoagulants are given for two to three weeks, then cardioversion if the AFib doesn't decrease or doesn't correct itself. In emergencies, you might be given heparin, which heparin is a blood thinner to help um, with the clotting issue that sometimes is caused by AFib and then cardioversion to kind of jumpstart the heart to reset the heart to go back to a normal sinus rhythm. So this is a picture of a atrial fibrillation and stroke, meaning that the patient hadn't had any blood thinners or anything as to that. And so they have <clears throat> thrown a blood clot and it's traveling through the bloodstream which can cause a stroke because it clogs up the blood flow to the brain. <clears throat> so this is what an atrial flutter looks like or an AFib. So basically you have no defined P's. All you have is a whole bunch of squiggly squigglies. No defined P at all in between your QRSs. <clears throat> SVTs, supraventricular tachycardias or SVTs is a catch-all term given to tachycardias that are supraventricular. That is, they originate above the ventricles. The prefix supra means above. In in either the sinus node, the atrium, or the AV junction. But those exact origins cannot be identified because P waves are not noticeable. You cannot see any P waves. <coughs> Superventricular tachycardias. Criteria are the rate is anywhere from 130 or higher usually no more or it can be usually greater than 150 beats per minute depending on how fast it's going believe it or not irregularity is regular there are no p waves so therefore you have no pr interval your qrs should be less than or equal to 0.12 seconds some causes of a supraventricular tachycardia is simply due to stimulants, hypoxia, or some type of heart disease. Adverse effects for SVT are decreased cardiac output. Some treatments that can be given for SVTs is digitalis, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, oxygen, electrical cardioversion if the patient is unstable or if the SVTs are unstable. And this is what a supraventricular tachycardia looks like, or SVT. It's just a super fast rhythm with no P waves. All you see is QR, QRST, straight across. All right, I'll work out this rhythm strip for y'all. I gave you this for homework um, a couple of assignments ago. So I'm gonna work out the first one for, with y'all. And basically, we have to go back to chapter six. Remember those questions we have to ask ourselves? So we're looking for QRS complex. Are there any QRS complexes? Yes, there are QRS complexes. Are they uniformly shaped or varied? Well, for the most part, they are uniformly shaped. So they are uniformly shaped. And I know you can't read this too good. And I'm in a little spot with a big pen. 
Regularity. Of course, we know we have to go R to R to find out our regularity, correct? So that's 5, 10. So that's 10 here, 5, 10, 10, 10, 9, 9, 10, 10, 10. So pretty much 9 or 10 across, so we know this is regular. So we know it's a regular rhythm, so we're going to use the little block method or the 1500 method and divide 1500 into 10, which gives us 150 beats per minute. So we know our heart rate is 150 beats per minute. We have no P waves, so we would just put NP. We can't figure out PR interval because there's no P, so NP. Now we can figure out our QRS. So we go from here to our J point. So it looks like about, we gonna say two boxes. I can't draw too good with this pin. So two times 0 0.04 equals 0 0.08. And make sure we put seconds. So, based of all of the criteria we have learned in all the HR rhythms, which criteria fits this particular strip that we just solved? Well, we know it's not an AFib, we know it's not an atrial follow, we know it's not a PAC because it's not a premature, we know it's not a MAT or WAP because the heart rate is too high. So the only thing left is SVT. Let's work more. Let's take a look at this rhythm. So let's ask ourselves those questions again. Are there any QRSs? Yes. Are they uniformly shaped or very narrow or thin? Well, they're uniformly shaped narrow. <coughs> They're narrow, but they are uniformly shaped. Narrow, but uniformly shaped. And I'm going to put uniform. All right, now to determine our regularity. So we go R to R again and figure out what is our intervals. But if you look at it right here, we have a premature beat. Yes. So we have regular with premature beat. Well, we're getting close. Let's determine heart rate. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. So it's regular with a premature beat. We still solve it the same way as if it was a regular beat because we really don't count the premature beat because why? It's just a hiccup. So we're going to go 1500 divided into 26, which will give us, let's take out our handy dandy calculator, divided into 26 gives us, so our heart rate is, 57 beats per minute. Do we have any P waves? Yes, we do. There's a P here, a P there, a P here, a P there, a P here, oh, and a P here. So yes, we have P waves. And yes, for every P there is a QRS. So they're married to QRS. All right. And they are also, if you look at them, pretty much all of them look the same except right here. So we will put they are varied. 
due to that one funny looking P. So let's figure out our PR interval. Our PR interval too far over let's do our PR interval come on pin we're gonna go from here to here so that's about one two three so that's three times zero point zero four which equals 0 0.12. Don't forget those seconds. Seconds. Next, we'll figure out our QRS interval, which QRS is this line, right? Oh, well, thank you for popping up. I drew a straight line. One, two. Two times 0 0.04, which gives us 0 0.08 seconds okay so what type of rhythm are we looking at well there's only one really that has a premature beat after all the ones we went through we know it's not a WAP it's not a mat because we don't have three different P's and the heart rate does fall into it it's not a paramoxyl taxi tachycardia or a PAT because it's not a consistent because remember paramoxyl means a sudden start and a sudden stop but we only have the one um, premature beat so that only leaves a PAC, a PAC or a PAC which is a premature atrial complex so but <clears throat> we also remember we can have an underlining being that our heart rate is 57 so how we would write this interpretation we would say sinus guess what it is sinus brady cardia with a p a c And that's the interpretation let's go ahead and do one more well let's see I ask those questions again are there any QRS's yes we have QRS's are they uniformly shaped nope they're varied narrow and varied because if you look at this one and this one and this one, yeah, they kind of look different. Okay. All right, let's figure out our regularity. Well, our R wave is down here. So we're going to figure out our regularity. So, it looks like, for the most part, looks regular. So, it's regular. Okay. Let's figure out heart rate. Let's see, that's 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, yeah. It's regular 18 so we're gonna go 1500 divided by 18 let's pull out our handy dandy calculator so 1500 divided by 18 equals 83 beats per minute okay are there any P waves none that we can distinguish so in a, and we can already put in A. So let's figure out our QRS. So that will go here. Get off. Here to here. Sorry, my lines are off. So two. 
So 2 times 0 0.04 equals 0 0.08 seconds. Okay, so this is our criteria so far. But what does it look like it's doing? It has those sharp edges, right? Like it's fluctuating, right? It's not a wave. It's a sharp indication of a point, right? Because remember, between an atrial AFib and an atrial flutter, an atrial flutter will have what we call picket fence, where it just points up, or we can call it a shark, shark teeth. So you'll have a shark teeth <coughs> or shark tooth effect. Or some people will say a picket fence. Oof. Okay, you get I did. Writing with this pen is not the greatest. So it kind of does look like shark teeth that's going on right here, right? It kind of pointing up. So that only leaves an atrial flutter. Because remember, an atrial flutter can be either regular or irregular, depending on how many times the AV node lets the impulse go through. All right. I hope this helps you understand how to work atrial flutters atrial fibrillation and SVTs. If you have any questions, you will get a review before you test. But in the meantime, please work on these rhythm strips. The more you practice, the more you get familiar with your criteria, the more you get familiar with what the rhythms gonna look like. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. If you have any questions about any of the lectures in chapter eight, please feel free to send me a text or a message and I'll be glad to sit with you one-on-one. -on -one. I hope you enjoy this lecture and have a nice day.